Hi, I'm Dr. Jen Devet, and Cosette and I are super excited to talk to you, oh, excuse you, about the top five myths about vaccinations. Because she doesn't like to get vaccines, but she needs them to stay healthy. So join us and we'll demystify vaccines. The opinions expressed on this site and by Dr. Jen the Vet are published for education and informational purposes only and are not intended as a diagnosis, treatment, or as a substitute for professional veterinary medical advice, diagnosis, and treatment. Hi, welcome to another episode of Is This a Thing? Veterinary Translations for Pet Owners. I'm your host, Dr. Jen the Vet. And if you're a pet owner who's interested in learning more about vet med, in order to better care for your pet, or just communicate better with their vet, then click subscribe below and don't miss an episode. You can also feel free to drop me a comment. Let me know what you're thinking. Okay, so today I'm going to talk about the top five myths about vaccines in pets. We all know that pets need vaccinations, but which ones do they really need? How do you know? And there's are they all that necessary? Are they safe? Well, let's get started with these myths that I think you'll find somewhat familiar. Myth number one, my puppy or kitten came with all of their shots already done. Okay, so this is a very, very common misunderstanding. Pets don't get just one set of shots and that's it. All in, all done, good for a lifetime. No, vaccine preventable diseases require that vaccines be administered correctly in order to prevent the disease. And so when you, when, like when you get a puppy um, and you take them at eight weeks or six weeks or 10 weeks and they were with their mother, there's no way for them to have received all of their shots they should have received at least one set of puppy or kitten shots, but they need at least two more. And the reason for that is because we give vaccines uh, in a series to babies because they have some existing immunity from their mother. But as soon as they hit about eight weeks or six weeks, if you take them away from their mom sooner, then that protection from mom starts to wane it starts to drop. We don't exactly know when it wears off because it's different for every pet. But what we do know is that it's sometime between eight weeks and 16 weeks. So we start those vaccines at eight weeks. We boost them again at mm, 11 or 12 weeks. And then we give that final set around 16 weeks. And somewhere in there, we give the single rabies vaccination that they need because that one produces significant immunity. So they just get one when they're a baby. And then next year, you guessed it, you gotta do it again, but not the whole series. So if you do it annually, just like the vaccine label says and like your veterinarian recommends, you probably only have to do once a year or once every three years for most vaccines. So I don't care when you got them. They did not come with all of their shots already. You should always take your pet immediately to the vet as soon as you get them, them to your home because within 24 or 48 hours, you should just have them checked out anyway. Okay, so myth number two. I don't have a dog. I have a cat and they don't need vaccines. Oh my gosh. So cats get vaccinated just like dogs. Well, not just like them because they get different diseases. So whether you have a, a dog, a cat, a hamster, a gerbil, a guinea pig, um, whatever it is, there are likely vaccines that they need to prevent them from getting some very common infectious diseases that can kill them. So you should check with your vet. But one myth that I want to dispel right away is that cats are great pets because they never get sick. That's not true. Cats are great pets, but they do get sick and they should be seen by their veterinarian once a year, just like your dog. So 
even if you have a cat, you still need to get your cat vaccinated and have them seen by their vet once a year. On to myth number three. So on Facebook, I learned that my dog shouldn't get vaccinated for lepto. Okay, this is one that I really despise, this myth, because so many people believe it and it's just not true. So lepto is short for leptospirosis, and this can be a very dramatic disease in pets and in people. That's right, lepto is a zoonotic disease, which means that not only can your dog get it, but so can you. Cats, mm, we don't usually see lepto causing clinical disease in cats. I don't know why, it's another part of the mystery that is the feline, but dogs for sure should all be vaccinated against lepto. And if you're wanting more information about lepto in dogs and why I'm gonna recommend that every dog, every dog be vaccinated for lepto, then you should check out my video on leptospirosis in dogs. So let's move on to myth number four. It is better to get titers done rather than over vaccinate your pet because vets just recommend all those vaccines because they make more money off vaccines and all those vaccines aren't safe. Okay, this is a huge myth. And that's kind of a lot of stuff all contained in one giant run on sentence. I know that. However, um, titers, antibody titers. So what is that? that that's where they take a, a blood sample and they check to see if your pet has antibodies against a specific disease. So um, it, it could be they have antibodies because they were already exposed to the disease naturally, they were infected naturally at some point, or because they got vaccinated. And if you have high enough antibody titer level, then maybe you don't need to boost your vac vaccination. Okay, that's possible. But antibody titers are not the only type of immunity. So pets can have immunity that is not reflected by titers. And titers are typically way more expensive anyway. And I'm not really sure what they tell you all the time. So vaccines are safe. And my recommendation is if you're concerned about getting titers versus vaccinating your pet, that you talk to your veterinarian and together determine what is best for your pet and their specific health status. Now, if you don't trust your vet and you think they're just trying to sell you, you know, um, a pig and a poke, well, then I'm going to recommend you get another vet because if you can't trust your vet, what are you doing going to that veterinarian? All right, so let's move on to myth number five. Myth number five, my dog or cat is old. And they've been getting these vaccines every year for like 10 years. They're good. They don't need them anymore. They've outgrown them. Oh my goodness. You haven't seen a sadder case than to see like a 10 year old chocolate lab come in having seizures because they have distemper or suffering from parvovirus. It is much harder on older pets if they uh, get sick with one of these vaccine preventable diseases like parvo and it can happen I don't care if you've stayed on course with their vaccines for the first decade of their life if you stop then you better be prepared for that 12 year old dachshund to need significant intensive care when they get sick with parvo or distemper okay so if you're concerned because of your pet's age talk to your veterinarian but you know, pets don't outgrow the need for vaccines. It's just not what happens. That's a myth. Let's move on to my bonus myth because that was five, but here's a bonus for you. I have a dachshund, Westie or Chihuahua, and they have really bad allergic reactions to vaccines, so they don't need them. We don't get them vaccinated. All the rest of the neighborhood dogs get vaccinated, so I don't have to vaccinate my dog. Oh my gosh, people, this is not true. This is 100% not true. So if you have a dog that's had an allergic or an adverse reaction to a vaccine in the past, certainly talk to your veterinarian. 
Because as a vet, if you come in and you tell me that, then I take steps to mitigate or prevent them having another adverse reaction. Because whatever that reaction may be, whether they're lethargic, whether they um, throw up, whether they have diarrhea, or whether they get like the basketball <laughs> swelling of their face, that is much preferable to any of those vaccine preventable diseases. And again, if you tell me that ahead of time, then I can pre-medicate your pet before I give them the vaccine so that we don't have to go through this. They don't have to suffer through that adverse reaction. The vaccine will still be effective. What won't happen is they won't get sick. They won't, you won't have to rush them anywhere. You won't be scared and they won't have to go through that. So let your veterinarian know if your pet has ever had an adverse reaction then allow your veterinarian to pre-medicate them so that they can receive the vaccines and they can remain protected from all of those vaccine preventable diseases. Okay, so that was the top five myths about pets and vaccines with a bonus number six for you. So hopefully this information can help you uh, I, I would encourage you to talk to your vet. If you have questions about vaccines for your animal, talk to your veterinarian for heaven's sakes. We went through all of that school and all of that training so that we can talk to you about what the right choices are for your pet's lifestyle. So talk to your vet. And if you don't believe your vet, you don't trust your vet, for heaven's sakes, get another vet. You should be able to trust your veterinarian and what they're recommending for your pet. All right, so that does it for this episode all about myths and vaccines. I'm Dr. Jen the Vet. Thank you so much for watching. Is this a thing? Veterinary translations for pet owners. If you're a pet owner who's interested in learning more about vet med to better care for your pet or just communicate with their vet, then click subscribe. And please remember, no YouTube video is a substitute for a visit to the vet. I'll see you all in the next episode. on the site and by Dr. Jen the Vet are published for education and informational purposes only and are not intended as a diagnosis, treatment, or as a substitute for professional veterinary medical advice, diagnosis, and treatment.